The grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, everyone. It's, it's good to be back doing the recorded service here. Welcome to you, whether you're a member of St. Paul's or Bulldernock. We know that uh, there are people quite far away from our own community that, that log on on a Sunday, and it's good for us to know that you're joining us. I'm grateful to John Wilson, who stood in for me last week while we were on holiday. I know how much his ministry is appreciated by our people. And we wish him and his wife, Elizabeth, and the family every blessing in their lives together. But let's now worship God as we sing, O oh God, you search me and you know me. as we so often do we look to the ancient voice of the psalmist to lead us into prayer he says I rise before dawn and call for help I have put my hope in your word let us pray God our father it's good for us to know that when we rise each morning whatever challenges face us Whatever may cause us anxiety, whatever might bring us to the end of our inner resources, we can depend upon your help, the eternal presence that brings us comfort, strength and peace. It's good for us to know that whatever words we hear, words that might be false, words that might deceive, words that might hurt or disturb. We have your word that reveals truth, truth that from all times has firmly stood and shall from age to age endure, truth that finds its highest expression in Jesus, the word made flesh, truth embodied. And so we pray this morning that however we may be feeling wherever we are whatever our circumstances we will be sure of your presence in this time of worship and that your words will strengthen our hope in Christ for the days ahead and we pray this in his name 
Amen. Well, hi boys and girls. Good that you're looking in once again this morning. I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to go away for a, a, a wee break. Um, quite, uh, it's been quite difficult for us over the last year or so to get away anywhere. So if you can manage that, then I'm sure you've had a, you've had a good time. We, we are just not long back from a week in Ely and Fife. That's a very special place to us. We were there quite a lot over the years when my boys were where we and we go back from time to time and the house that we lived in was was great because we could look out of the the window onto the the harbor and quite often the 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 sea was just covered in people who were engaged in in water sports some of them really quite quite stunning you know the the wind surfers and folk like that but there was another water sport that really had me standing in amazement and I, I don't know if you've ever seen this before but it's kite surfing kite surfing now here's a photograph of of somebody who is kite surfing surfing you can see the, you know the kite up in the sky there and they're on the the wee surfboard and they're getting dragged along and here's another photograph of somebody who's really shown off now I mean this guy one hand on his on his uh, harness and you know showing us how easy it is for him you know i think it must be a wonderful thing to do but i don't see me trying it anytime soon but the reason that they're able to go these incredible speeds you know and it's very very fast at times is because of the wind the wind catching the kite and they get pulled along and as i say it must be a fantastic experience the wind has so much power now i want you to hold that in your mind just now the wind has 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 power because this strangely enough reminded me of that moment when jesus had risen from the dead and he gathered his disciples around him it was only a, a group of 11 at, at that time and he said to them now very soon i'm going back to heaven but i want the work to go on i want you to go into the whole world and to tell my story and to share my love with people and you know if i was one of the disciples i would be thinking how does he expect us to do that just this small wee group of people and he wants us to to do all that well jesus said to them i am going to send you my spirit i'll be in heaven now i've i'll have gone away i'll be in heaven but i'll send you my spirit and it'll just be as if i was with you and i will give you the power that you need to tell my story and to share my love with other people and that's exactly what happened you know when the day came when jesus sent his spirit to the church it was as if it, it was like the sound of a, a, a mighty wind that's the way it's described to us in in scripture and with that power the disciples were able to to go into all the world and to do what jesus asked them to do and that's something we've got to remember, especially when we've got a, a task in front of us that's proven to be very, very difficult. We can pray that Jesus will give us his power in order to see us through to the end. I want you to remember that, boys and girls, as we go forward together into the future. We're going to sing your hymn together now boys and girls one more step along the world i go and i want you to imagine that we're going forward in jesus power
friends, we are continuing in our series of messages from Paul, and we focus today on a passage that is, I'm sure, fairly well known to you from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Now, there's a lot of detail in this passage, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to continue our study of this into next week. The main focus this morning will be upon verses 10 to 15, but we'll read the whole passage together now. Ephesians chapter 6 at verse 10. The apostle says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, Words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. God will bless to us the reading of his word and to his name be glory and praise. Let us pray. God, our Father, we give thanks that your Holy Spirit can give power to the human word. We give thanks that your Holy Spirit can open our hearts to receive your truth. And we pray that all of this will come together now as we approach your word, that we might know you more deeply in ourselves and be more committed to your ways. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, during lockdown, we often heard that this was an opportunity for us, an opportunity for us to declutter. In other words, to look at the things in our homes that we absolutely need and just get rid of the other stuff. Now, I would find that very difficult myself, especially when it comes to my study. But there is one thing that I would always want to keep. And here it is. As you can see, it's a model of a a Roman soldier. And he sits on my desk whenever I'm working and if ever... I'm in need of a wee bit of uh, inspiration or encouragement. I look up and I see him fully armed and ready for action. Now, what's that all about? Well, I hope that it will become more clear to you as we proceed in the preaching this morning. But let's just for a moment be quite clear that the Roman soldier would be very familiar to the Apostle Paul. He would be seen in the streets of Jerusalem and in other parts of of Israel, even in the outlying places. He would be guarding 
public buildings. He would be generally keeping the, the peace. He was a, a formidable presence in the midst of the people of Israel at the time of the Apostle Paul. He, collectively, the Roman soldiers were, were, were very disciplined, very organized, and ready whenever there were any disturbances within any parts of the empire ready to engage in war. And the Apostle Paul brings the Roman soldier to the attention of the people in Ephesus and making the point that they too have to be ready for conflict. These Christians in the very early days of the church's history always have to be, in a sense, ready for any sign of, of opposition to the gospel that they were proclaiming. Now, obviously, he's not talking about physical combat. Paul was speaking about spiritual combat. He believed that there were influences, dark influences in the world, which were working against faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And individual Christians and communities of Christians always had to be ready to engage in the struggle against these dark influences. They had, like the Roman soldier, to, to take a stand whenever there was any aggressive influence acting in their lives as individuals or as a community. They had to be ready to push back the darkness and to allow the light of Christ to shine into their own particular community. And that's a message that needs to be heard for, for every age. Otherwise, why do we have it? in the scriptures for generations of Christians to reflect upon. And I think that what we have to, to recognize is that in every age, there will always be an assault on truth, an assault on, on truth, the truth that has been revealed to us in the life and ministry, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if any of you have ever been in a court of law and have ever had, ever had to take the oath where you, you, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's quite a, a somber moment when you have to do that. Well, I, I came across a cartoon in a magazine just recently where there was a person in the dock and they're swearing to tell my truth, my whole truth, and nothing but my truth. And you see, the point is being made that nowadays it's very difficult to talk about something that is true. It is difficult to say, this is the truth about God. This is the truth about humankind. This is the, the truth about the destiny of humankind. What matters is my view on all these things and not what has been revealed to me. And that's the atmosphere in which we're all seeking to bear our witness in our particular generation at this, at this time. People just will not accept absolute truth about God, about humankind, and about our destiny under God. And to say anything other than that is to be at risk, at least to be called narrow-minded, and maybe at worst, to be called a bigot. Well, the Apostle Paul and the others in the early Christian communities, they took very seriously 
the statement of Jesus when he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. In Jesus we see God revealed. In his death on the cross we, we see the, the, the absolute need of humanity. The core need of humanity which is to, to be forgiven of our sins. To be renewed in the Holy Spirit and to go forward with the assurance that God has a destiny for the whole of humankind which is good and which is loving and what Paul is, is saying to the Christian community in Ephesus is that these are truths that we need to buckle round our inner being in the same way that the Roman soldier buckles on his belt around his waist it was his belt that, that, that held everything together. And Paul is saying that if we are to have a genuine perspective on God, on humankind, on our destiny, then we really need to wrap these truths around our inner being. Because unless these truths have found a place in our hearts, then there is a danger that we will experience within ourselves an assault on our assurance as Christian people. You know, I was speaking to, to someone just the, the other day there who was commenting on, on protests that he'd seen in our own land and in others. And, and he said to me, you know, these people are just so sure that they are right. And it was obvious from his tone that he found this a, a very unpleasant characteristic in these people, that they were so sure that they were right. But it did occur to me that that is sometimes the way that, that we Christians are perceived that we are so sure that we are right and maybe when we're talking about buckling on these truths that would be the impression that's being made but if we have grasped the gospel if we have seen what our deepest need is as a race then we will be in no danger of what is called self-righteousness because we will understand that righteousness in the sight of God is not something that we can generate righteousness in the sight of God is something that is given to us and is given to us out of a sense of our own need like the Apostle Paul who was faithful in so many ways to the faith in which he was brought up and yet did not feel that he had peace with God until he realized that Jesus had paid the price for his sins and through that he had peace with God. He has a verse in another letter which has been called by some people the great transaction where Paul says God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God now that's quite a thought isn't it really that through the sacrifice of Jesus it's possible for us to stand before God as righteous not for anything that we have done, but because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we can stand in his righteousness. Now, we should not allow anything to disturb that sense of assurance that, 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 that we have as, as Christians. You know, Paul talks 
about the, the breastplate of righteousness. Bringing to mind the breastplate of the Roman soldier which protected him from all the vital organs in his body. And Paul is saying that the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ, our sense of that righteousness protects us from any dark influence that would seek to make us wobble in our faith and perhaps depart from our faith. It's what uh, Wesley would, uh, would write in, in one of his sins when he gives us this vision of being clothed in the righteousness. The righteousness divine. It is that which encompasses us and is our assurance that we have peace with God. And with that assurance within ourselves, we are set free to serve. We are set free to, to bear witness to men and women through our faith as we give an account of it, but also in the love of Christ, which enables us to see others as more important than ourselves. And that brings us to a, another point which Paul is seeking to make, that the, the armour of, of God protects us against this assault on our Christian witness. These evil powers that are seeking to influence us. Paul is quite sure that if they can in some way disable our Christian witness, then they have had a triumph. You don't see them very often on our streets nowadays, but I remember some years ago... Um, having a conversation with um, the Hare, well, a Hare Krishna person. I used to see them in the centre of Glasgow quite a lot. And I remember asking him what the whole idea of salvation was with, within his faith. And, and he responded very quickly and said, well, we don't think of anything quite so selfish as salvation. We don't think of anything quite as selfish as salvation. And again, you see, I was made aware of how Christian people might just be perceived by others. That we are concerned only about ourselves and how we are before God, and that excludes any movement towards other people in their need. But you know, in reading the Scriptures... And they're looking at the history of the Christian church. It's very clear to me that conviction about these great truths I've been talking about this morning and that experience of inner assurance, it doesn't lead us to close ourselves up against the, the world in which we're called to serve. It actually moves us to service. All of this overflows from our lives into the lives of others because we have a story to tell and we have love to share that we ourselves have experienced in the Lord Jesus Christ. What we have gathered from him overflows into the lives of of others, And that is what Paul is, is talking about surely when he speaks of the, the shoes of the, the Roman soldier. You must have your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of, of peace. A Roman soldier's shoes or his, or his sandals, they gave him a firm ground in which to engage with the enemy in which to give an account of himself. 
And Paul is, is saying that that readiness to bear witness to, to others, to, to resist any temptation for our witness to be diminished, that that is something that needs to be part of our overall mindset as Christian people. As we have been touched by the great truths, as we have experienced the warmth of this inner assurance, so we are made able to reach out to others with the gospel, to focus them upon the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he can do for those who know their need. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you that you have called us as a people to dwell in your light, to push back the darkness, that the light of your truth and your love might shine more brightly in the world. We thank you for those we have known in the past who have fought the good fight, who were never overwhelmed by the darkness, who kept their eyes firmly fixed on Jesus, the light of the world. We thank you that they were faithful to the end and now enjoy completeness in Christ. Be with your church as she holds out the word of life wherever there is cruelty, injustice or disaster. Be with the nations that every government's priority will be the good of its people and not its own survival. Be with Afghanistan especially at this time, that all those who are vulnerable in the present upheaval, women, children and Christians, will be kept safe. Be with our own nation as she works out her response to these circumstances and prepares to welcome refugees. Be with our own people who find it hard to focus on the plight of others due to their own burdens. Grant healing to the sick, peace to the anxious, comfort to the bereaved, love to the neglected, faith to those who resist your call. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And here is now as we come together in the prayer that he taught us to say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We sing together now, Longing for Light.
God of hope keep you in all joy and peace because you trust in him and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore.